back to the Ripe Wave Audio community, where we explore together all types of home audio systems from hi-fi to home theater. My name is John, and for this video, we are providing introductory details of the recently announced new Anthem AV processor receiver lineup. We are also comparing each against the models they are replacing, so you'll have a good sense about what has been added, changed, or removed. Our AV Processor Receiver Buyer's Guide 2020 series just concluded with Part 10, which included the new Anthem flagship processor, the AVM90. Now we will dive a little deeper into the details and include all five of the new processor receiver models. If you miss the AV Processor Receiver's Buyer's Guide 2020 series, I have provided the links for your convenience in the description. At the end of October, Anthem announced the whole new line of AV processor receivers and amplifiers. Now for this video, we will focus on the two new AV processors and three new AV receivers, which RifeWave Audio labels all five as processors for short, and hold off on amplifiers for now while some details of the new processors are still not available, including their spec pages, Anthem has provided enough details with the initial data sheet to get a good picture of their capabilities before they go on sale in December this year. Now, despite new models not being available until then, the old models are already listed as discontinued on their website. The new models have undergone a major cosmetic overhaul and the new design language has been superbly executed. While the 2015 models always have looked good, the new models make the old, well, look old in comparison. The front display has superior resolution with a clean fonts versus the blue dot matrix two-line style uh, found in the older models. While the supplied images only reveal how the volume level is indicated, we suspect that other information will also be available on this display. We are happy to see a full-size headphone jack on the front versus the hidden panel on the prior generation. Overall, the styling makes a great first impression. For the overview, we will start with the basic details of the AV processors. Given the leap in channels, the AVM90 and the AVM70 are not really direct replacements for the AVM60. At 19 and 17 channels respectively, the 12-channel AVM60 seems to be left in the dust. As processor separates are generally reserved for the buyer who wants more, it is not surprising that Anthem has decided to relegate 12-channel mo models to their receiver lineup to focus processors on high count. At first glance, the AVM90 and 70 appear to be uh, separated by two subwoofer outputs. However, the data sheet indicates that the AVM90 has upgraded circuitry. We will cover the DAX later in this uh, video, which helps to support that claim. We wonder if there are other circuits yet to be disclosed to justify paying twice as much for the AVM90, which sells for $6,999. However, if you are looking for a processor that can independently control up to four subwoofers, this is going to be your only choice in the market without spending significantly more. At $3,499, the AVM70 is going to cost $500 more than the AVM60 it replaces, but you get five additional channels of processing as well as other improvements such as DTSX Pro, IMAX Enhance, along with an upgradable HDMI board which currently ships with support for HDMI 2.0B versus 2.0A of the AVM60. Subwoofer control increases to 2 
for the AVM70 versus with the 60, uh, you effectively have one because the dual subwoofer outputs are in parallel. Anthem retains the toroidal transformer on these processors as indicated by the donut next to the power icon on the slide, along with Dolby Atmos and Dolby Vision support. For the I.O., Anthem has retained the same configuration except for four changes. There are now three HDMI outputs. One HDMI output now supports eARC versus ARC. Pre-outputs increase to accommodate the additional channels. And finally, one analog input now supports a turntable with moving MacNet cartridges. As with the AV60 replacement, the MRX1140 replaces the MRX1120 with five additional channels of processing. The amplifier stays at 11 channels with the same 140 watt power output as before. Now the MRX 1140 retains the toroidal transformer, which is not present in the other receiver models. The MRX 1140 is the only receiver in the line with dual independent subwoofer outputs. The MRX 720 was replaced with the MRX 740 with matching amplifier channel counts and power handling. Both the MRX 1140 and 720 jump up $200 in cost from the models they replace with a cost of $3,699 and $2,699 respectively. HDMI ports are now upgradable, 2.0B ports, as with the processor separates and decoding of Dolby Atmos DTSX Pro remain consistent as well as Dolby Vision and IMAX enhanced support. What is new is the amplifier matrixing function that lets you assign which speakers will use the internal amplifiers and which speakers will be driven externally. For I.O., again, the HDMI outputs are increased and eARC support is added for one HDMI output. However, no support for turntables on the receiver models. The MRX 1140 picks up additional pre-outs to match the increased channel count from 11.1 to 15.2. Finally, the MRX 540 replaces the MRX 520, again for $200 over the previous generation at $1,599. Anthem makes a smart move to provide two more channels of processing on the MRX 540 to support 7.1 configurations versus 5.1 of the MRX 520, as 5.1 receivers are losing ground to soundbar systems today. If you only have the need for 5.1, not to worry, you'll just have two spare outputs. Amplification remains the same at 100 watts. Note that RipeWave Audio wishes Anthem uh, would join NAD to disclose the all channels driven power rating. The MRX 540 is no different than other new models in that it supports uh, the Dolby Atmos, DTSX Pro, IMAX Enhance, and Dolby Vision uh, standards. The HDMI 2.0B port is also future upgradable. Following the other new receivers, the amplifier outputs are matrix, so you can determine which speakers get powered by internal amplifiers. For I.O., again, HDMI outputs are increased and eARC support is added for one HDMI output. However, no support for turntables on receiver models. The MRX 540 picks up additional two pre-outs to match the increased channel count from 5.1 to 7.1. Anthem has identified the digital audio converters, DACs, used 
on their data sheets, and the new processors deviate from the Anthem standard used uh, on the new and old receivers, the AKM 4458VN, as well as the, new, the now discontinued AVM 60. All DACs are from Ashahi Kase and are 32-bit in depth, can process 768 kilohertz PCM signals, and have a differential analog output. What differs between these three chips which are used are signal-to-noise ratio, total harmonic distortion, and DSD support. Now the AVM70 utilizes the AKM 4490 EQ DACs, which improves signal-to-noise from 111 dB to 123 dB, and lowers total harmonic distortion from minus 107 dBs to minus 112 dBs, but keeps support for the DSD-256 11.2 MHz signals. Note this is the same DAC used by Emotiva for their RMC1 and Marantz for their AV8805 processors, which this, these units would likely compete with. The flagship AVM90, with its upgraded circuitry, uses the 4499EQ DAC chip, which has the superior ratings for signal-to-noise of 140 dB, a total harmonic distortion at a negative 124 dB, and DSD support for DSD 512 at 22.6 MHz. Anthem joins the trend for removing on-screen interfaces in favor of a web-based user interface. While this requires you to have a computer, tablet, or phone that can connect to the processor, it should result in a better overall experience. With these new models, Anthem allows for saving and loading and exporting and importing of settings and also provides an iOS app. Connectivity changes a bit on these new models. All models now support Wi-Fi and Bluetooth 4.2 wireless connections. Support for Apple AirPlay, AirPlay 2, and Google Chromecast Audio has been added. Rune compatibility is planned, and as Rune has become very popular, uh, this is a welcome addition. Spotify Connect support, uh, available in prior generations, is also still to be implemented. Anthem does not currently indicate support for DTS PlayFi and Alexa certification found on older models. The new models increase trigger output by two for a total of three. A list of IP and serial control integrations are shown as supported, which are not clearly indicated on the 2015 models, albeit may be supported as well from Control 4, Savant, RTI, Creston, Elon, and R. URC. Video support remains consistent with prior generations for Dolby Vision, High Dynamic Range, Hybrid Log Gamma, 4K 5060 Switching, and Standby Pass-Through, among other options. The 2020 models gain IMAX Enhance in, and an additional HDMI input. Anthem Room Correction, ARC, Genesis is the latest version of Anthem's own correction software and is compatible with prior generations except for those which rely solely on RS-232 connections for data and is included with these new models. ARC Genesis faces the strongest competition from Dirac Live, which is used by many of the mid to top tier solutions. Odyssey and Yamaha's Waipau are often noted as being a grade lower than ARC and Dirac. And solutions from Onkyo, the 
AccuEQ, Pioneer, MCACC, and Sony DCACEC fall below and are not discussed in general. There are a few others of uh, room correction solutions like Room Perfect and Trinoff solutions, which are only available on high end processors. Anthem's Arc Genesis and Dirac Live seem to receive the most favorable attention lately. As such, the included Arc Genesis is likely to be a positive um, feature for those that are considering. Well, that wraps up the initial overview of the new Anthem AV processor receiver range after a five-year run with the previous generation. RipeWave Audio is feeling optimistic about this range, and it appears Anthem has uh, made some good moves uh, with this range. First, it is a very attractive design and could blend in among the best systems aesthetically. I believe they got the channel count balance correct with 12, 17, and 19 channel options as logical stopping points. The now popular 16 channel count seems a bit lost between categories. Certainly having a controllable 4 sub option below $10,000 mark is a plus. The lack of 8K support for now is acceptable and with the Plan HDMI 2.1 upgrade buyers should not feel torn about jumping in now with these new models. The only major format missing is Oral 3D but content is not widely available. Quality decks are used throughout the range and just get better as you move up. Alexa fans will hope for support to be added as in the 2015 models, albeit we should continue to check the website as more details are posted. Perhaps Alexa is planned, coming soon, or really finish, uh, just not advertised yet. Given these details, we are waiting in anticipation for these products to release uh, officially in December. RipeWave Audio is certainly watching this range and would like to get a unit for in for evaluation. If you are considering one of these new Anthem models, we would appreciate hearing your feedback. Please include in the comments section, do you feel Anthem got the range right? What about the pricing? That feedback would be useful to the RipeWave Audio community. Furthermore, if you enjoyed this video and are interested in enhancing your audio experience, please like and subscribe to this RipeWave Audio community and be sure to select the bell icon so you will be notified as soon as the next video is posted. Until then, keep evolving your audio experience.